Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the two different types of stalls, kind of how to watch out for them as well as how to recover from them. So we've had a pretty successful flight so far and we've gone ahead and uh, done our things now. First thing is, whenever you practice stalls, you want to make sure you get a little bit of ground underneath you. So what I'm going to do is apply full power first. Now, once I do get up to full power, I'm going to lift the nose up to get myself climbing at about 70 knots or so. Again, 70 knots is going to get us the fastest rate of climb that we can get on this aircraft. Keep in mind, rate of climb is affected by things like, you know, weather you know, engine power, it's going to be affected by what angle you do, all these different kinds of elements. But in general, keeping it right around 70 knots, it's going to get your aircraft up about as fast as you're going to be able to get it up in these kind of conditions. Whenever you're practicing something involving sort of stalls, you want to make sure you get at least 2,000 feet of ground underneath you. Now, unfortunately for us, the uh, local altitude happens to be about 700 feet above sea level, which means if we're going to safely be able to practice stalls, we're going to have to get ourselves at least 2,500, preferably 3 3,000 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and climb up just a little bit here to go ahead and protect myself from uh, any accidents. Stalls often are accompanied by spins. Now a spin is basically a stall that you allow to get out of control. When you spin, basically you've uh, unevenly stalled the two wings. Now one thing I want to say first is uh, for those of you who are new to aviation terminology, a stall refers to an aerodynamic stall, not an engine stall. We're referring to the wing itself exceeding what they call the critical angle of attack. When this occurs, you no longer produce proper amounts of lift and actually create quite a bit of turbulence behind the plane too when you do that. And because of that, the aircraft can no longer fly at the current altitude. Now, depending on what style of aircraft you have and uh, what your weight and balance is set up, those stalls can get very, very bad if not corrected. A uh, stalling is one of the common causes of business jet accidents because basically when you're coming in for a landing, you realize that you know your nose is up a little too high, you're going a little too slow, the plane starts to stall, you pull back on the controls, which makes the stall worse. And we'll demonstrate exactly what that looks like uh, once we get ourselves up to a safe altitude. Again, I'm going to let my nose come down a little bit. I'm climbing just a little bit too steeply here. I didn't want to be too, too aggressive with it. Now I'm starting to pick up a new layer of some turbulence, but that always happens when you get a little bit higher too. It actually gets smoother the higher you fly generally. All right, remember, if I just pull up as hard as I can, it does not make the airplane go up any faster. You've got to keep it as close to that critical speed, that VY, as we like to call it, as you can. Ah, uh, 3,000 feet. I'm actually going to lean out the mixture just a teeny tiny bit here. And let's go put it out to about here. That looks pretty good. Beautiful. 30,000 feet. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So there are two basic kinds of stalls that we usually practice uh, when you're learning to fly a plane. The first kind is what they call an approach stall. These are the safer ones to practice well, for those of you who are following along at home kind of thing. Basically, what you're going to do is simulate as if you were approaching a runway and you basically stall the plane because maybe you came in too fast or you pulled back too hard. These are easy to practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the throttle all the way to zero. I'm actually going to also turn on the carburetor heat. We don't want to accidentally run into a carburetor icing thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow the aircraft down to 80 knots. Remember this is a 152 so it'll be different depending on what aircraft you're operating. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop my flaps all the way down pretending like we're approaching for a landing here. Now when you do that the aircraft is going to start slowing down aggressively because of that extra drag. Okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply just enough thrust to keep my aircraft from losing any altitude. There we go. Do you see how the nose of the airplane is up really, really steep right now? And there's the stall warning. The stall warning is designed to go off before you stall. So you can see right now, is even though that alarm is going off, I'm not actually losing any altitude. So basically, I'm standing on the end of my propeller here. I'm actually below my stall speed, and I'm still in control of the plane. Now, if we were to suddenly kill our thrust, and I keep pulling back, I keep pulling back, I keep pulling back, and down we go. That little drop there was the actual stall itself. You'll notice that if I pull back, I can actually make the stall worse. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce my power again, and I'm just going to pull the controller back. I've got this thing all the way. Now notice we're losing altitude, and there's the drop, and that's the potential spin, which is why you have to be quick to catch the stall. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. I'm going to let myself off. Flaps are still down. I'm in great shape. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my power to zero, and I'm going to try to prevent myself from losing any altitude. Pull up a little bit. Going to need more. There's the warning. 
And as soon as that nose starts to drop, we just go ahead and let it drop gently. Now to recover from a stall, basically what you want to do is hold the aircraft level. And then once you've recovered from the stall, you want to gently bring the flaps up each notch. If you just jam the flaps up immediately, you'll actually restall the plane because you'll lose all that lift that the flaps provide you. Now this aircraft is not really known for having enormous amounts of power. So stall recovery is going to be a little slow. So again, let's go ahead and do that again. Flaps go all the way down. Very nice. We start to slow down. We're going to, again, we're just practicing. Notice how high the nose is. That's usually the first warning. There's the warning when we start losing altitude. And there it goes. Full power. Hold it level. And then gently fly out of it, milking the flaps up gently. Don't start bringing those flaps up right away. Otherwise, you're just going to restall the plane, like I said. And we actually did a pretty darn good job here. All right, so that is one type of stall that we usually practice. I'm going to go ahead and kill the carburetor heat. It's actually killing my horsepower right now. The second kind of stall you practice is what they call a departure stall. This type of stall occurs when basically you're trying to pull back too hard. You end up basically standing on the tail. I'm actually going to give myself a quick little clearing turn here. Look at the uh, pretty uh, scenery there. We should really regain all the altitude we've lost because this one will lead to really, really bad spins if you are not careful. There's also an airport directly in that direction, so I didn't want to get too, too far away if I could help it. There it is. Hey, guys. You're watching us have a good time there. All right. So to simulate this one, there's a couple different ways to do it. I'll show you the way I was taught in flight school. It's not really my favorite way to do it, but it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the nose up. And I'm going to push the throttle all the way forward. And now we're just going to sit here and wait. All right, pulling the controller back further, pulling the control back forward, and oh boy, flat spin. Now, what just happened here? Well, that is a classic example of when you have an asymmetric stall. Remember, a stall is when you exceed the critical angle attack. If it doesn't happen evenly, you run the risk of spinning the plane. So let me go ahead and do that a little bit more carefully this time. Give yourself full throttle. Again, I'm just sort of hanging on the propeller. I need myself to get a little bit of right foot here. There we go. A little bit more right foot. Not too much right foot. I don't want to spin it. And down we go. Nice. So you can see the recovery is simply a matter of literally letting go. So I'll go ahead and pull myself back up again. Again, I'm using my inclinometer to try to stay somewhat coordinated with my feet. When it stalls, watch the vertical speed suddenly go down. And down we go. And that's it. So now what about those pesky stall you just saw again that led to a spin? Well, spins are dangerous. Basically, the way to get out of a spin is something called pair. That's power off, aileron neutral, rudder opposite the spin, elevator forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally spin and show you what that's going to look like. So I'll stand on my tail here. Wait until it starts to pull, and let's do it. Okay, aileron's neutral, elevator opposite direction, and just slowly fly out of the spin. That was not much of a spin. Ah, I was disappointing. And let's see if we can make it a little worse. Oh, yeah. That'll be nice. I intentionally push my foot a little bit to that direction. Oh, yeah. Come on. Here we go. And, oh, it didn't snap. Bummer. One of the big things with spins is if your center of gravity is too far forward, you basically can't spin the plane. But again, what you want to do is you want to put your foot in the opposite direction of the spin, put the ailerons at neutral, don't do any of this, and then go ahead and push the elevator forward. A lot of times you want to pull the power out because leaving the power in can make the spin a lot worse if you're not careful. So again, those are all things you want to think about. Stalls are kind of a nice thing to practice. Uh, the stalls are most common when you're right about to touch the ground, believe it or not. A lot of people get a little too slow, they pull back, and next thing you know, your stall. If you really want to have fun with the stall, you can actually stall when you're turning. Now this is dangerous. Oh boy, you can follow that thing. All the thing starts to get away from me when that happens. So you want to be very, 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 very cautious when you're doing turns like that. The other thing too is some people confuse the speed here. Of, um, just because you're in the green zone doesn't mean you can't stall. As a matter of fact, I'm totally in the green. If I ever just pull back, I just stalled the plane. You can stall whenever you exceed that critical angle of attack. And again, angle of attack, if I didn't mention it before, is basically the angle of your wing to the incoming air at it. And you don't want that to get too, too much. Otherwise, like I said, you end up in a stall. Some stalls are good stalls, believe it or not, and they're going to give you the ability to land the plane more smoothly, especially if you're working with a tail drag airplane. But we'll deal with that another day. Enjoy.